Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into Let us pray. O Christ, you take upon yourself all our burdens, so that freed of all that weighs us down, we can constantly begin anew to walk with lightened step, from worry towards trusting, from the shadows towards the clear flowing water, from our own will towards the vision of the coming kingdom. And then we know though we hardly dare hope it, that you offer to make every human being a reflection of your face. Amen. I leave you, my peace I give you, trouble not your heart, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, be not afraid, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Trouble not your heart, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, be not afraid. My peace I leave you, my peace I give you, trouble not your heart, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, be not afraid. From the psalm. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Sing praises, all you peoples. Sing praises to the Lord. 
Sing praises, all you peoples. Sing praises to the Lord. Sing praises to the people. Sing praises to the Lord. Sing praises, all you peoples. Sing praises to the Lord. Sing praises, all you peoples. Sing praises to the Lord. Sing praises, all you peoples. Sing praises to the Lord. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners, and be crucified, and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven, and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. He is risen. Alleluia. Yeah, I know. It kind of caught you off guard, didn't I? Isn't it amazing? That was just three days ago. And we're already kind of going, Easter? (laughs) Well, I still smell lilies. By the way, if anybody wants any, please take them. You know someone who would like them, please do. Share the joy. Yes, we still have, we're lighting the Paschal candle. All right. Pastor's wearing white. It must be Easter still. But how fast do we lose Easter? probably faster than we lose Christmas. I find it ironic that, you know, Christmas is supposedly 12 days, starting Christmas Day. Easter's technically 50 days, ending with Pentecost. 50 days in the church calendar for Easter, 12 days for Christmas. Most people might gut Christmas out to about Epiphany, which is 12 days. Easter, the eggs are packed, the decorations are out. You might have a few jelly beans laying around or a couple chocolate eggs. And that's all that's left in a physical sense. 
But for us, how do we carry Easter with us always? Paul writes that, you know, those of us who believe in the resurrection are the most to be pitied because we actually believe in something crazy. But it's not just some activity that we believe in. We believe that there is something that carries with it. There we believe that there is something beyond a space that ha- is no longer has a body in it. We know that carries something more. Or at least we should. Otherwise, is really Easter nothing more than idle talk? He's risen. Good for him. Have you done a new trick in 2,000 years? So what do we do with this message? What do we do with the fact that what was once was dead is alive? What do we do with our almost cross fetish this symbol of Good Friday in light of Easter Sunday? What does it call us to do? What does it call us to be? And a simple question, so what? Is it just Jesus' riz good for him? Neat parlor trick? What do we do with it? How do we embody this gift? Does it seem like just idle talk? And trust me, it will. It will seem like idle talk for those that keep looking for the living amongst the dead. When God said, I'm about to do a new thing, God was serious. But that new thing wasn't just a, look at what I did. This new thing was meant for us. Death, where is your sting? Where is resurrection life in you? In a world that is consumed by wars and rumors of wars, in a world that is consumed with retribution and violence and vengeance, in a world that seems to stand most on the strong, you know, might makes right, greed is good. What role does an empty tomb play? What does it mean for Jesus to take the absolute worst and create life? What does it mean for Jesus to take all of the scorn and ridicule and respond in forgiveness? What does it mean for Jesus to have taken the, almost the futility of existence in the face of empire and oppression and respond with hope and new life. 
What does it mean to take derision and hate and respond in love? May those seeds of faith find fertile soil in you. May the space that he created in that tomb, that monument to death, may those seeds find fruition in you that lead to new life. May you be able to bear the fruit of the kingdom to take up a cross and follow. and go forth being light, showing love, carrying mercy. And speaking up for those who need it. For isn't that what he did for us? Remember that God loves you. And so do I. Amen. Throughout the Gospels and the stories that have Jesus appear to the disciples, there's one thing that always happened. Food. Being on a lake shore in Galilee and him baking fish or breaking bread with disciples on the way to Emmaus, food was involved which just goes to show you that Jesus was a Lutheran. But that seems kind of odd, doesn't it? For somebody by death who can, you know, rise again from the grave, what's a meal? Some may say it was just to show that he was really alive and not just a ghost or something like that. I tend to think of it as is always the case of what Jesus did. It wasn't about him. It was about those he was with. Whether or not he needed the food was immaterial. Those around him needed the food. Those around him needed the fellowship. Those around him needed to be reminded that he was once again in their midst and everything that happened before was gone. New life had come into their midst. So whether they had abandoned him or denied him or any of the countless other things that they might have done, Jesus again gathered his disciples and made sure they ate. 
Because again, it wasn't so much about what had happened. It was what's coming. Which is why we do communion at the end. Service is not about doing good things in order to cleanse ourselves or prepare ourselves in order to receive communion. No, it's the gift of grace and love. This in remembrance of me, which is like the last thing you do before you go back out into the world that wants you to look for the living amongst the dead that thinks of grace and peace and love and mercy as idle talk. And so may we be sustained yet once again in this meal by our Lord and our Savior, who on the night in which he was betrayed took bread, blessed it and broke it, gave it for us to eat and said, take and eat all of you. This is my body. It is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, said, take and drink. This cup contains the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So may we receive this gift of grace, this gift of love, and may it strengthen us And by the power of the Holy Spirit, may we rise again in newness of life, going forth proclaiming Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, dear Lord, and teach us to pray in the words of the Tizay community. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Keep us from temptation and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we celebrate communion this day, we have a prepackaged communion. Uh, the ones that look kind of like our glasses, honestly, have wine, and one end is the wafer and the other end is the wine. Be careful which one you open first. The ones that look like a unitary, almost kind of like coffee creamer kind of thing, is the grape juice. That one is a very light foil wrapping over the wafer and then the heavy foil to the grape juice, so be careful how you open that. There are um, baskets to either side, or bowls off to either side, for you to place the empties in. There is also... um, four prayer stations across the front. If you wish to spend some time in reflection and prayer. And there are gluten-free wafers if anyone needs that. For those of you joining us online, uh, simple plate, simple cup, bread, crackers, wine, grape juice, something simple. Again, Jesus sat at a banquet table and took the simple staples off of it to remind us of his enduring presence and love and God's ability to do amazing things with simple things like us. And if you have a candle handy and would like to spend some time in reflection and meditation, this would be a good time to light that candle as well. And so come and taste and see that the Lord is indeed good. Where there is charity, God is truly there. Where there is charity, selfless love. 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 Where there
his charity, God is surely there. Where there is charity, selfless love. Where there is charity, God is surely there. Where there is charity, selfless love. Where there is charity, God is surely there. Where there is charity, selfless love. Where there is charity, God is surely there. In God alone my soul can find rest and peace. In God my peace and joy. Only in God my soul can find its rest, find its rest and peace. In God alone my soul can find rest and peace. In God my peace and joy, only in God my soul can find its rest, find its rest and peace. In God alone my soul can find rest and peace. In God my peace and joy. Only in God my soul can find its rest, find its rest and peace. Let us pray. Breath of the Spirit of God, you place faith within each one of us, faith which is such a simple trust in you that it is possible for all to receive it. Without us yet being able to see clearly, you enlighten within, O Christ, even in the opaque regions of our being. Amen. God, keep me safe, for I trust in you. The pathway to life you teach me, with you is peace and joy in all fullness. 
God, keep me safe, for I trust in you, the pathway to life you teach me. With you is peace and joy in all fullness. In God keep me safe, for I trust in you. The pathway to life you teach me. With you is peace and joy in all fullness. Today will continue through the month of May. But this is my last today with you until the, until the fall as I step away for sabbatical starting uh, next Monday morning. Uh, but there will be today all through May. And then as part of my sabbatical, there is the opportunity to try something a little different. And that is during the month of June, we will have a Celtic style evening worship service, evening prayer. And following that will actually be a class on Celtic spirituality, Celtic prayer, Celtic spiritual practices. And those will be led by Pastor Stuart McDonald. And so that'll start June 1st. And then when that is done, they'll take a break at the high part of the summer when everyone's trying to stay out of the heat. And then we will, we will start back up in September with Tizay. Go forth with this blessing. The grace of the word of life rest upon you. The love of the source of life embrace you. And the transforming power of the breath of life help strengthen and surprise you this day and all your days. Amen. <laughs>